Building good-looking landing pages can be a daunting task, but it doesn't have to be, because actually you only have to understand three crucial elements and three crucial settings to be able to build any layout you want. Hi, I'm Hanne from Thrive Teams, and in this video I'm going to show you the three elements and the three settings you need to understand in order to build those pages. Now, let's dive right in. So first of all, we start from a new page on the website and we're going to choose a landing page. And for this tutorial, I'm using a blank full width page. So let's open that landing page. Now you can see on this landing page that the page is white, but you already have a gray section on it. So this is a page section. And it's actually the very first element we'll want to understand in order to build good looking landing pages. Now, if your landing page only has one color or one image, you don't have to worry about this. But as soon as you want to build a bit more complicated landing page, such as maybe a home page or a sales page, you will want to be able to change the background color depending on the sections of your website. So depending on the sections in that page. And this is where you need page sections for. Every time that you want to change anything about the background, you need to think page sections. So here, for example, we can see that we have this gray section and we have the page that is white. If you want to change the white color of the page, you can go into your landing page settings. And from here, you can change the background of the complete landing page. So let's make this a dark gray. You can see that this page section didn't change colors because this one is independent from the background color. So here, when we click on the page section, we can give this another background color. So let's make it this gray blue. Now, if the next part of your page, you want to have an image or you want to have another background color, you can simply copy this section, click on it, and then we could make this white, for example. Now you can see that this will allow you to make those nice looking landing pages that have like this background image on the top and then an other colored section underneath it. Just like the one here where you can see we start with a background image and then we have like this gray section and then we have a white section. If you go down, it's a blue section. So each time you switch colors on your landing page, you use a page section. Now, the second element you need to understand is a content container. And this is a bit abstract, but think about the width of your element. Each time you want to change the width of any element, you want to use a content container. So let's drag a content container in here. And when you click on this content container, you can see, so here each time actually you can see in which element you're clicking. So here you can see content container options. Sometimes on your landing page design, you don't necessarily want your content to go all width. You might want your content to be, for example, only 900 pixels wide. To do this, you would simply put here 900 pixels. And you can see that now you have like this gray dotted line, and this indicates how far your content will go. So now any content that you will put in this content container will only go until 900 pixels. So for example, if we put a column layout now in that container, you will see that the columns, no matter how many columns, they will only spread to 900 pixels. So let's do that. Let's pick a column layout and let's pick a three column layout, for example, and drag it into this container. So now, as you can see, this only spreads to the width of the container. If I pick the same column layout, so again, three columns, but I put it outside the container, so above it, you see that it's wider. And so the content will be wider. Now you can use content containers in, like I said, any element. So for example, if within this column layout, you want the content 
in this column to be smaller, again, you would use a content container. Now, why is it so important to use content containers and not margins and padding, something we'll talk about later, is because a content container allows you to keep your website mobile optimized. It will always change and stay responsive. Whereas if you add margins and paddings, you will see that those are fixed. And so this might change the look when you go onto a smaller screen. Another element that is a very cool element to make good looking layout is the content box. So when you go into the content box and let's pick a style six, if you put the content box into the content container, you'll see that you have a content box of 900 width, pixels width. If we take that same content box, we put it outside the content container, it will spread until our 1176 pixels. And now if we take a content box and we put it into a column layout, it will go nicely the width of the column. Okay. Why would you use a content box? Well, this is if you want to change the background color of only that element. So page section to change the full background of the website and a content box to change the background of a certain element. This allows you to build very interesting layouts already, but there are three more things that I want to show you. And I already slightly talked about it because we're going to talk about margins headings and line height. So when you think about margins, you have to think about adding spacing around the outer border of your element. If you talk about paddings, you're adding spacing on the inner borders of your element. So let me show you what this means. If I click on the page section, for example, I can add a margin around this page section. And you can always see that you have like top, bottom, left and right. So you'll be able to change on the four sides of your element. If I add a top margin, look closely what will happen between um, the, this image and the blue gray section. So we can put a 100 there. So this just added spacing here above the element and you won't be able to add anything there anymore because now it's filled up with that space. We can do the same on the bottom of this section. So if you click on the section again and you will click on margins and padding, let me just move this around a little bit. You can see, so we, we just added our top margin and we want to add a bottom margin. Now here, the margin will show our background color of the page. So it will show this gray color of the background. If I change the color of the background, so again, if we go into the landing page settings and I make this, for example, like green or something, you can see that this changes. So if you add mar margin, you're showing the background of the page and you're pushing down this page section further down the page. To understand padding a bit better, let's go into a content box. If you think about adding paddings in the content box, you can see here on the inner border that you have the text element. And if you add paddings, you will make that text element narrower and you will add more spacing. So if you click on the content box, you go into margins and padding. And here, for example, let's change the right and the left padding. So if I add 100 pixels to the left and 100 pixels to the right. I just made my text element more narrow because now this spacing is filled up with paddings. The problem, like I said before, with using paddings to change the width of an element is that this is not mobile responsive. Let's copy this one, but instead I will put zero in padding I will add a content container to this element inside the content box. Add the text into the content container. And now change the width of the content container to be 650. So this would be exactly the same visually as this one, right? 
So we both have here 100 pixels on the screen that we're working with. But if you now save changes and you go into our development view, so we can see on mobile, you will be able to see the difference on a smaller screen. So I will make this screen smaller. Watch what happens. Here, the content box that has the padding, the 100 pixel padding, will keep the 100 pixel padding even though the text isn't very readable anymore. Whereas the content container will scale with the screen size. And you will avoid having things like this where it's only one letter per line and you will keep a very readable text. So now this was the difference between padding and a content container and the importance for mobile view. And then there is one more thing that I want to show you, and that is line height. Line height only applies to text elements. So this is very important to understand. The problem is that if within a text element, you want to have more spacing in between the lines, you cannot use margins or paddings because it's within one element. And like I told you in the beginning, the margins are the outer border of the element, the paddings are the inner border of the element, but there is nothing to actually change like within the element. And that's where you need line height for. So I'm going to copy this element because I want to show you the difference between the margin padding and the line height. So here, if you say that, for example, this text, let's make this bold. If this bolded text, if you think that it would be better readable with a little bit more spacing in between the lines, you can click on it and go into line height. And here you can make this, for example, 40 pixels. So you can see now that there is more spacing in between the line heights. Now, if you want to have more spacing in between text elements, so in between this first element and the second element, you would use margin, not line height. So for here, you could then add a margin on the top of the element. And this allows you to have spacing in between the elements. Now, the best way to learn how this works is to play around with this, to make different layouts and to see how it works. But let me just give you a quick recap to change the, the, the complete background of a, a part of your page. You need to use a page section. To change the width of any content, you add a content container. So within a page section, within columns, within a content box, you can add a content container to change the width of your element and keep it mobile responsive. And then if you want to change the background color of only a certain box on your page, then you can use a content box and change the settings for that box. The three settings you need to understand in order to make good looking pages are margins, paddings and line height. Margins is the spacing you will add on the outer border of your element. Paddings is the spacing you add on the inner borders of your element. And line height is used for text elements to change the spacing in between the text lines. Now, I hope this helped you to see how to build great looking landing pages. And if you have any questions, please leave them below.